<laughs> so I like to say, if you get a nice introduction, then the only thing what it remains is to give a bad talk, you know. So, <laughs> so, <clears throat> so I don't know what's written here, actually, but I, I was told that this is uh, Paraha, Puraha, and uh, that is Yarik, and it's an Esetril, but, uh, and, uh, I mean, I should say that uh, uh, there is a more and more to it than it seems on the first glance on the, on the slide, you know, the, we have a new institute, it's a computer science institute of the whole Charles University, and, and it is, uh, that may scare some of the mathematicians, but, but I would say that, like to say that the Prague is one of the places where there's a very good contact between computer science and, uh, and the mathematics. And particularly our group is responsible for it because uh, we somehow, we sit in computer science, but we are one of the strongest mathematical, mathematical group. And we founded this new institute just to get, uh, we split the Department of Applied Mathematics into Computer Science Institute and, and the Department of Applied Mathematics to get more power, you know. So, <coughs> so which one is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, here you have a, Institutional, yeah. that's a picture, <laughs> it's written, what is it? I, I don't know, again, don't know what, uh, what is it. <laughs> you, know, you can write anything, you know, you can write something. <laughs> 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 maybe, it, it, maybe what's written there uh, means that uh, this, is a, this is a stupid painting. <laughs> So this is what I will speak about, it's a joint project with uh, my uh, recent collaborator, or frequent collaborator, uh, Patrice Osana de Mendes uh, from, from Paris, who is now having a position as well in Prague with us. <coughs> so if you come, here is the contents of the lecture. I will, well, maybe it's too ambitious, I don't know whether I will say everything, so I will skip possibly uh, uh, things, but certainly I, will, I, want to, uh, I want to cover uh, something at the end too. Uh, so I will say a few words of what is motivating it, I will say a basic definition, and uh, I mean this is leading uh, from the, in the title is some dichotomy between sparse and dense, so I will be uh, speaking about this dichotomy that shows uh, uh, basic characterization and stability of it, or why, it is, why we feel that it is natural, and uh, then there will be case study, there will be uh, homomorphism and uh, coloring problems, so-called coloring problems or CSP problems, and it will end up with our recent work on structural limits, somehow unifying uh, things which uh, other people did. <coughs> so, <coughs> so here is the outline. So, okay, combinatorial structures, by which I mean graphs or uh, relation structures, uh, more general, uh, hypergraphs or, or uh, systems of triples, quadruples, I mean, um, are often, we feel, when studying them, that they fill into two categories, that they are either dense or they are sparse. So here are some features why, uh, which uh, indicate why, why we see, when we think of them as dense. I mean, they may have a large chromatic number, they may have a small independent, uh, small independency, small independent set, Missing, missing T here. Um, they may have a very large, very large degrees. And the corresponding theories which study it are uh, in combinatorics uh, uh, go under name extremo theory or Ramsey theory. Yeah. On the other hand side, if uh, we have a sparse structures, which uh, I mean they somehow are characterized that they have a small number of degrees smaller derivation which is defining them is a small they may have a bounded chromatic number they may have a bounded degrees <coughs> they have a large independence number so this uh, is uh, alpha is independence number they, they may have be like a tree they may have a tree like structure and these such a things are typically studied in a structural graph theory I mean the studying the graphs which can be represented on some surfaces and the key notions there are, for example, minders or, or subdivision. 
But it's important to know that, uh, that none of these properties is somehow characterizing them. I mean, so it's efficient, you know. The graph may have a, uh, may have a bounded chromatic number and still can be extremely complicated or as complicated as, as anything, uh, you know. Think of arbitrary graph and somebody put an extra point on every edge, you know, you get a bipartite graph, but essentially you have the same graph as before. This is simply just a, just a cosmetic change uh, of the... Of the, it doesn't lead any to any any, any reduction of complexity, and uh, and then I think more and more today people speak about this uh, dichotomy of dense and sparse, and uh, and typically there are many results. I mean this this left side the dense, I mean. And this is sort of surprising on the first glance, but I mean the, the, the dense cases seem to be more, more studied, or uh, not more studied, it was classical, uh, classical study is more understood than the, than the sparse case. So sparse case is, uh, is a case which is uh, typically, uh, seems to be in many cases more difficult. Yeah. So what is uh, sparse? Yeah. Well, the sparse, uh, it's, uh, of course, it's uh, context dependent, you know, it's a fuzzy notion, and, uh, but uh, one can define here in this lecture, we shall approach it through the, that it is defined as an invariance to some local changes. And what will be the local changes? Local changes will be bounded radius contraction, so that we contract something only locally, we do local changes only, yeah, and uh, it's a hereditary, it will be closed on some graphs. And, uh, and it's a property of classes, it's not property of individual. I mean, if you, this is uh, this coming from this uh, fuzziness. I mean, the humanists can say that the one concrete graph is sparse. I mean, you have to you always speak about a class of the graphs, which is uh, which is a sparse, <coughs> and uh, and uh, and it's a good to say because I think you, you had uh, here last year you had a workshop on graphs classes, right? Uh, maybe almost a year ago, and so it's sort of fitting. To, to speak about it here. Yeah. And this uh, dense and sparse dichotomy, which, is, um, which, I, uh, which I'm addressing here, they will take form of uh, somewhere dense versus nowhere dense classes. Uh, that, that I will explain now. Yeah. So here is a picture which we modified because I was afraid that it will not be seen properly. So Sangil, using the advanced technology, uh, allow me to, uh, to to put some few lines to it, I mean, so there will be a uh, dividing line between the uh, uh, nowhere dense classes and somewhere dense classes, and some of the classes will be those which have uh, many edges, and which even have uh, uh, edges uh, uh, omega n to 1 plus epsilon, which uh, sometimes are in extreme uh, regarded as, uh, as uh, sparse classes. On the other hand side, uh, uh, the nowhere dense classes will be so-called bounded expansion, which include uh, proper minor code classes, somehow geometrically represented graphs, you know, uh, bounded degree graphs, and just a common generalization of, of uh, those two notions, which sometimes seem to be, for experts, uh, you know, they, they seem to be very, uh, very incomparable. And, uh, and uh, I can. A sample of results, which, uh, which uh, I will mention. I mean, uh, every graph in a nowhere dense class maybe has a decomposition in a few, few, classes, uh, few classes of a finitary type. <coughs> if uh, I, uh, the classes, in a certain sense, this is uh, characterizing them, uh, as well as it characterizes them that the uh, class is nowhere dense, if uh, for every p, if I consider p, p distance uh, graphs, then then they 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 can they will not be uh, complicated. They have a chromatic number bounded uh, bounded for every p for the Bay different con constant. The the class is nowhere dense if the class of uh, uh, somehow bounded borings, so you are placing points by by k tuple by uh, by few number of points. Then uh, the blowing is not uh, not uh, destroying this sparseness uh, proper property, but the K has to be fixed. I mean. So the, this uh, this dichotomy, I will try to convince you that the dichotomy is somehow natural, 
and uh, in fact these snow weather classes unify and extend uh, it's more algorithmically motivated you, uh, they unify and extend uh, uh, known uh, pre, uh, polynomial algorithms and uh, and this uh, the dichotomy is very robust and uh, and uh, it uh, seems to be algorithmically convenient parametrization. So these are the basic definitions. Yeah. So this is this is uh, the end of motivation. So if you if we're uh, uh, somehow overwhelmed by by many notions, so st start to listen again because uh, now I will say a few definitions uh, <coughs> of the key definitions. Yeah. So the key definition is uh, is this. Uh, and it's a definition of a shallow minor. Yeah. <coughs> now the so we, you have, uh, for example, I use a blackboard. Take a take a grid graph. Yeah. And uh, and you may you may so these are the these crossings are the vertices and edges in between. Yeah. So the, the minor is that you identify some edges and you, you may as well delete then some edges in the result and you may delete some points. But let's concentrate on this on the con, on this contraction part of it, which is somehow the uh, trivial part. So 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 bounded uh, if you have a point, you may have a bounded radius uh, <coughs> around the point, and that you can contract, that you can replace by one point. Then you have another point and you may I have a bounded radius and you may contract it. <coughs> you may contract bounded radius, not the, whole, not the whole neighborhood, some subset of the neighborhood and that you may contract. And the resulting graph, if you build by the contraction, you will call the shallow minor. And this, uh, and this is, uh, the, each of the neighborhood should have a, should have a bound uh, by R, and this is the shallowness of the, of the, of the or I, uh, sorry, I, I only that's the shallowness of the of the minor. So, for example, if I have a if I have a if I have this this uh, this lattice, <coughs> and if I have this grid, and I would contract this, yeah, uh, somehow the uh, long and uh, sin uh, sin subgraph that would not be shallow minor, right? I mean that can be very long. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah. So something uh, if I by this shallow minor, I somehow keep, in a certain sense, this uh, two-dimensionality. If I contract it, I, I would sort of split it into into picture like that. Yeah. <coughs> that I cannot do. Yeah. This. That I cannot do. The shallowness, I cannot do. It. So the shallow minor is, uh, this is the class of all, this is explaining what means a shallow minor. So depth of a minor is a maximum radius of the contracted, con contracted subgraph. And, uh, and this is sort of uh, uh, slightly complicated slide in a way, because I mean I denote by uh, C naught I, I denote the class of all shallow minors, which I obtain, or I shallow minors, I is fixed. And so it can be one, for example, I, I shallow minors of graphs from C. So what is it for i equal to one? It means that I take uh, I take uh, points in my I take arbitrary graph in C. Think of, for example, class which have a bounded degree and uh, uh, dig, uh, cubic uh, uh, degrees bounded by three. <coughs> and uh, and I uh, and I, I take any graph which has a degree bounded by three and I contract I contract some neighborhoods, for example. Uh, disjoint neighborhoods, or sets which are contained in a, in a disjoint, the, in a, a, which are disjoint and are contained in the neighborhoods. And all the graphs which I con which I get in this way, I denote C nabla one or C nabla i. Mm. So, for example, in the, if I if I would have a bounded degree graph, if I would have a cubic graph, yeah, let's uh, let us use it again. <coughs> I have a graph which has all degrees by bounded by three. Cubic, and I contract. It's a local operation. I contract this. This. What do I get? I get a point, right? That will be uh, this. Uh, this uh, potato. Or this blob is a uh, is a uh, one point, <coughs> and uh, and what will be degree? Or degree will be six, right? 
four, at most six. I mean, so in the same in the same six. So so then it goes up. Yeah. So right. <coughs> so I know now what. Uh, so the, that that uh, if that was a g g in c c is the so this then that will be then contraction will be there will be some g prime and that will be long to c blah blah one yeah and so <coughs> i can consider that if if i create some multiple edges if if there's some there are some edges which are between two two but i simplify i it's just for convenience so here is a movie illustrating, yeah. it leading to some like uh, parametrization of graphs. Yeah. So uh, let me go back still. So in this way, uh, in this way, I, I obtained a class uh, which uh, uh, which uh, sequence of classes. I mean, class which uh, where I uh, where I. Uh, uh, where, uh, where I consider radius zero, which basically means I only take a monotone closure. So these are all subgraphs of the graphs from the C. And then I am taking, uh, uh, contracting the radius one, uh, uh, radius at most one, radius at most two. So obviously I am, I am getting uh, larger and larger class of graphs. So we call it resolution. So it's, and we think of it like this, like in time. I mean, so it's a, uh, the resolution which is uh, developing in time. We start in zero time, and uh, I mean we are getting larger and larger classes uh, 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 in the way how how, bi how big neighborhoods we are considering. So I mean it begin with uh, class C, and this uh, this uh, rectangle. Let's like uh, think of it like a swimming pool, swimming pool of all the graphs. I mean so every uh, these uh, these dots which are not there are are all the graphs, yeah. and we. Uh, in the time run, we probably uh, we we found the class C number one, and this is the class of again of the all the all the contracted graphs from the neighborhood uh, of the graphs in C. So it's a larger class, and then we put C number two, and so on. So we somehow produce like a wave in the swimming pool, and uh, eventually we we after infinitely many steps, we may read the whole, gra whole class or not. And so the, there are few examples what may happen. For example, if we consider a class of all planar graphs, a planar, planar graph is, is like a solid rock, you know, that uh, nothing will happen, right? Because I mean, we know that the planar graphs are closed on contraction, and they are close, uh, closed on, on minors of any, any, uh, any size of neighborhoods, I mean, so it holds that planar graphs, number i is the same as uh, play, uh, is the class of all planar graphs all the time, so nothing happens, I mean, so it's, uh, it's uh, no waves in the swimming pool. On the other side, if we have a class of boundary degrees, we will eventually get all graphs. I mean, if every graph is a, is a contraction, uh, can be represented as a contraction of cubic graphs. I mean, so this is already indicated in that, in that, uh, on, on that, on the green board. Yeah. If we forbid some more generally some topological minor, if we for the forbid a subdivision of certain graph. I mean, we get the same phenomenon that we eventually get all the graphs. Well, we have a sort of exotic exotic uh, class of graphs, a class of graphs which uh, where the degree is lower bound for the for the for the minimal uh, minimal minimal cycle in the graph and we get the same and even that is fitting fitting it into into this uh, category. So these all are examples of the sparse classes of graphs. And uh, and it's leading to the definition. Don't read this. Uh, what is on the on the top? Then I mean, uh, that's a definition that we call. It's easy. We uh, call uh, the class is somewhere dense. If the swimming pool is filled in finite time, so if there exists a time i zero, such that this, uh, the class C nabla i is the class of all graphs. A class is nowhere dense if it is otherwise. So it's obviously dichotomy. I mean, so I mean, you cannot be a class which is belonging to uh, bo bo both of it, and uh, and uh, so it's uh, every class belongs to to one of one of those. No. It looks like an arbitrary, I mean, sort of definition, but actually it's in a certain sense very natural, and uh, and that's uh, uh, the examples of this dichotomy. Are, uh, are abundant and they somehow are uh, s uh, depicted on the on the on this 
on this uh, uh, flow chart. I mean, the, so you have a bounded. Uh, so these are all examples uh, here, are all examples of the of this uh, uh, bounded or this uh, no dense classes, and it's a bounded genus and excluded <laughs> apex minor, excluded minor, and. Uh, 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 things which appeared uh, in in logic, which is called almost white. I will say a few words about it. Bounded three depths. I mean, locally locally excluded minors. You know, so these are all. I mean, many of these classes are geometrically defined, and uh, and basically all the uh, they fit into this into this framework. Now, now the. What is the, I want to show you now that the, this uh, dichotomy or this definition is in a certain sense very robust and, uh, and natural and, uh, and uh, I will give some applications. So the definition is not arbitrary, which uh, is possible to describe it by, uh, by, by many graph or many natural or standard uh, graph parameters, for example by, by alpha, by the independence uh, independence uh, number, minimum and maximum number of uh, points which are not, uh, not connected by any, uh, which are not in the relation, uh, omega, the maximal creek, maximal complete graph which exists, uh, by chromatic number, by things which are called V-coloring, and also by various density, and that's actually uh, quite, uh, uh, quite uh, interesting, that the same definition you can get, <coughs> or the same dichotomy, it's independent whether you consider shallow minors or whether you consider shallow topological minors. I mean, whether you, you do the same thing only with, uh, with, uh, with a subdivision. Whether you consider immersion, what's called immersion, you have to define what's a shallow immersion. I will not do it, but you get the same. Uh, same. Uh, I mean, the topological minors is, is that you, you are considering... Uh, I mean, existence of the passes between the between the vertices and shallow immersion is uh, which are which are vertex disjoint and shallow immersion is that you consider uh, you consider uh, existence of the passes which may intersect in vertices but which are edge disjoint uh, and also by counting and uh, show this uh, at the end. So here is a characterization and. Uh, so I will give you a few seconds to grasp the uh, result. For, to be on the safe side, I put it uh, so that uh, you don't see it too much, you know, in the light, uh, uh, in the light back, so the light uh, yellow. So, so this, is, uh, this is a characterization. These are all equivalent statements which, uh, uh, which are characterized whether the class is uh, nowhere dense or not. No, I don't expect that you, you even read it, but I will explain some, some, of, some of the points. Yeah. These are all equivalent statements, basically saying that the density of edges is a, is a small, density of the, the chromatic number is a small, I mean, the, this independence number is small. So let me, let me, let me explain some, some particular feature. So equivalent, these are all equivalent characterization. So I mean, the class is no dense if and only if. If and only if you take a logarithmic density, so if you take the logarithm of the number of uh, number of edges divided by logarithm number of vertices of your structure, then it is one plus epsilon, less or equal to one plus epsilon for every, for every epsilon, for asymptotically. So if it is one plus little o one. Yeah. So this, uh, this uh, logarithmic density, of course, propagates to, means, means the following, that uh, the number of edges is, uh, uh, is, uh, is a number of vertices to one plus epsilon, one plus little o one. It leads uh, somehow more convenient. One can consider, you know, maximum average degree, or this, uh, this, uh, this is maximal. Uh, we call it, we call it R grad, you know, uh, greatest reduced average density. I mean, uh, so uh, and this uh, then means that these grads are are uh, number of verti uh, number of vertices to little o one. So. Um, so it's something like R, R degeneracy of the, of the structure. So I mean, so it, it may either be defined by this, it may be defined that these graphs are uh, G to O1. It may be defined that the V coloring number is a, is a P V coloring number is a, is a, is a small. Now the, uh, which is somehow 
pass uh, uh, version of degeneracy, perhaps I will, I will not say, uh, say, say even what is it, I mean. But then let me explain this a little bit. It's uh, about the independence number. Yeah. So I mean, what if I would like to have? So I mean, the graph is sparse. Uh, if we would like to have, or intuitive feeling is that uh, if it is big, then it has so many points which are not, not, uh, not, uh, not mutually connected. That's of course true because I mean there is a Ramsey theorem which is saying that every graph either contains big independent or big, uh, big, big creek. If it is sparse, it doesn't have a creek, so it has to have this indep independence. But let's try to quantify it, quantify it by the distance, right? <laughs> So I mean that, uh, so that you say that uh, uh, the set is R independent, if the distance between any two of the, its members is uh, greater, than, greater than R. So R1 independent it means that they are not connected, these points, two independent means that they are, they are far away. They are uh, the distance, in the distance greater than two. So, <coughs> so, so can we, Expect that uh, that any any big sparse graph contains uh, uh, R independent uh, R independent set. Well, of course not, right? Because I mean the typical example which is sparse is uh, is a tree. So, for example, star. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, what I will do? I mean these uh, these points they are all at distance two, right? So I mean, you cannot hope that uh, and they, so, uh, any big star never contains, uh, never contains. Uh, it has a diameter too, right? So I mean, you cannot, you cannot get a big independent set in it. But you can, you can destroy a point, and then it has a large independent set, which is, which is too independent, right? And that's exactly what it's, what it says. So you say that, uh, uh, you say that. Uh, class of the graphs is quasi right if it has the property that if I fix uh, R, so this, uh, if I fix this uh, distance, if I, uh, if I fix this R independency, this parameter R, then there exists SR, it's a fixed number, so that for every N, it's a complicated thing, but it's sort of a uh, Ramsey-like statement, but it, its uh, meaning is uh, Easy. So for every R there exists uh, uh, SR, so that I if I fix the size of the independent set, I get a bound on the size of the graph. So if I have a graph which has, uh, uh, in, the uh, in the class which has uh, at least capital N vertices, then there exists a small set of the fixed side, size uh, at most this SR, so that if I delete it, I get a R independent set which is, uh, which is, which is big. This is I, this is n, not r. Yeah. So, so if I <coughs> have a bigger big graph G, <coughs> which is bigger than n, <coughs> and I want to get a set which is which is far away, which is where the distance is at most at most r, uh, at least at least r, and I can get it by removing s r elements. If I delete fixed number of elements, I get, I get, uh, I, I get it. And this very different. This is equivalent. Yeah, this is equivalent what we had before. Right? It's a, uh, I mean the, the, the uh, it has a slightly it has a different name. It's actually this property originated in model theory. I mean so uh, the graph is quasi right if and only if it is, it is nowhere dense. I mean, so. And here is perhaps the uh, most useful, I mean, uh, uh, characterization. I mean, the, you may as well say that, I mean, the study of these classes is sort of based on decomposition. I mean, and it's, a, we call it low tree depth decomposition of the, of the class. So what, it, what it means? It means that uh, if we fix a parameter P, P is, P is a parameter, then we can split the class in a few, in the, uh, in the uh, any, any graph in the class, we can, f we can split it into few, few parts, few classes, uh, few, few sort of color classes, which have the property 
that if we take any p of them, and p is a parameter, p is like approximation, measure of approximation. So if we, if we, if we take any p classes, then in the induced subgraph, which has a three depths at most p. Yeah. So what is a three depths? Three depths is a parameter which is somehow, uh, uh, which appeared in, in, my, in several contexts, in, actually in various a mathematical discipline, it appeared in model theory, it appeared in the algorithms, you know, the, in the graph theory, and, uh, and so the three depths uh, is a minimal height of a root of three such that the graph is a, is a, is a sub, uh, sub, subset, like a subgraph, weak subgraph of the closure of the tree. And closure of the tree is just an ancestor relation in the, in, the, in the set theory, I mean the trees are Say trees are uh, relations which are uh, which have the property that for any point the predecessor are well ordered. So actually, this is this is how they view uh, the tree anyway. So here is the picture, uh, which is somehow uh, perhaps explaining in a, in, a, in a better way. So we have the tree depth is the minimal height of the tree t. So for example, this uh, this tree. Subject G is a subset of the closure of the T. So, for example, if we have this pass of the length 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 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 pass of length is, it is a subset of this closure. Why? Because, I mean, if we visualize it in this way, we find it in the closure of, the, of this tree. Okay. So, the t tree of this is a height, height 3 and, uh, and uh, now the this is uh, uh, this notion. Uh, as I said, it uh, it's uh, related to quantify rank of the of the of if you if the first order formulas are canonically canonically uh, uh, represented by trees, uh, then uh, then it's related to the quantify rank. It's uh, um, it's uh, called uh, in the set theory. It's called rank function. If it is uh, if, if it is defined in transfinite induction. Uh, particularly, and it's called uh, as well. Uh, and it has various names. I mean, it's uh, some uh, order chromatic number. It's uh, called, and uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, in a way, it's a uh, minimal height. These three depths of the graph is a minimal height of the elimination tree, uh, which uh, which you can define for the graph. Uh, or a minimal height of the three depths, uh, a minimal height of the uh, of the uh, depths first uh, uh, search uh, 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 tree, uh, which is uh, which is corresponding to the graph G. So it has an al algorithmic uh, characteri characterization uh, too. It has a fantastic property, which is attractive to logician, and and uh, and it is it is the fact uh, that. Uh, that if you fix uh, these three depths and you bend it, for example, you take you consider the graphs which have the three depths at most uh, 50. Yeah, and uh, how many there are? Well, infinity, right? So I mean, uh, for example, what are what are the what are the what if you take a three depths of the G at most two? How does it look like? Well, these are just the stars, right? <coughs> we define it, I forgot to say it, and it's actually, it's a mistake on the slide. Uh, we define it uh, for connected graph. If it is disconnected, we just do it for as a forest, or we do it component-wise. I mean, so, so <coughs> this so this graph has a, has a three depths of mode two. Well, but they are somehow they are equivalent, right? These are just the stars, right? So I mean, particularly, I mean, they have a, they have a, if you say they may be identified, the way it's a blown up, uh, blown up of the, of the, of the single graph of, of, a, of an edge, yeah. and uh, or the, they have only one core, so-called one core, so you can uh, you can ident you can identify uh, vertices in them. They, are, they have symmetries. They have five. So how does it look like for three depths, uh, three depths G at most three? Well, equally simply, I mean the the, the graphs look like this. Yeah. 
और और फॉर एग्जांपल और द पास ऑफ लाइन सिक्स अस 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 इंडिकेट और देयर आर अगेन फ्यू फ्यू एग्जांपल्स लाइक दैट एंड देन मोस्ट इन जनरल बिकॉज इफ यू टेक अ थ्री डेप सेट मोस के देन देयर एग्जिस्ट सम नंबर एंड के व्हिच सो दैट सो दैट एनी ग्राफ एनी ग्राफ g and uh, g bigger than mk has uh, has a uh, mm, has uh, involution hmm. f exchange so it means uh, automorphism so that f composed with f is identity <coughs> a different than identity Which is uh, actually not leaving any edge, uh, any edge fixed. So it's a technical assumption, and so it means basically that the, any graph has the uh, has the two parts which which are isomorphic, and you may identify them. Yeah. So they are not uh, not uh, asymmetric graphs, uh, which are which are large. So they are only finitely many, uh, fi finite up to some uh, duplication, duplication. There are only finitely many. Uh, graphs which have a uh, bounded, bounded, uh, bounded three depths, so they are only finitely many, so that there is no homomorphism between them, for example. So there are only finitely many examples. This is basically the up to this homomorphism equivalence. It, it may be the only, only uh, invariant which uh, which has this, which has the property. I mean, the gra graphs with bounded three depths are technically are well quasi ordered with respect to existence of homomorphism. Which is extremely strong property, and this holds not only for for them, but you may take arbitrary labeling. I mean, if you if you label the vertices or edges, you label with with some fixed number of colors, and you consider these isomorphisms or 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 homomorphism as a label preserving. Still, it is well quasi ordered. Still, the number is finite. And on the other side, this number is not. Uh, you could think uh, from the examples which I showed here that uh, that the number is small. Is nothing far from true. Actually, the number of of those graphs which somehow up to this equivalence, uh, which uh, which exist, is actually bounded. So I have made two to two to and k times. It's a true function of the of the of of the of the. So the number is large, so it's not elementary, and so it's an attractive to attractive uh, structure to, to logicians. So, so then you can, on the other hand side, so you, this uh, graph is is uh, nowhere less if and only if uh, the, all these numbers f are small, they are they are n to little o one. So and uh, <coughs> so you can partition any graph into into parts which. Uh, Which so there are only finitely many types on any p any p levels. I mean, essentially, they are only up to some reductions, up to this homomorphism. There are only finitely many types which uh, on any p levels. Yeah. So they are locally simple. Yeah. So I mean, the, actually, the, this notion can be uh, characterized in an, another way. The, The three depths is bounded if and only the longest pass in the graph is bounded. And so, and so, yeah. Okay. Well, I, may, I think I will. I mean. <coughs> so, I mean, then, uh, I mean, from these characterizations, I can, one can elaborate some consequences. I mean, so. For example, that uh, all structures in an overdense class may be somehow finitely uh, approximated with arbitrary precision. So they have, uh, that is why every every large graph is a sort of equivalent. I mean, in some sense, in, in counting of subgraphs, for example, is uh, is uh, is uh, can be uh, approximated by by a fixed size graph uh, up to the blow and some some blowing. They all satisfy so-called homomorphism preservation, which is a beautiful result, which is proved by Ben Rossman, you know, and 
and it was uh, in this setting it was proved by Dawar and and us <coughs> and he tried to the descriptive complexity of the of the classes and I may say the last one so so I mean if you don't follow then this is again about something else okay. so so homomorphism between graphs is a mapping which preserves edges and nothing else yeah, so that's a uh, so it's uh, edges are preserved, but points may be identified. It need not be isomorphism, of course. I mean, the, there may be more edges in the in the graph H. You know, if there is something, uh, if if there is H in G, then there is a H a, in H. And that, of course, is an algebraic concept, which, uh, uh, as the na as the name says, you know, and. Uh, which appears, uh, I mean, in more general setting. Yeah. So, if you have a if you have a homomorphism from from G to H, then it's uh, it's usually this is uh, this can be called as well uh, K, uh, H coloring, because uh, because the homomorphism into K three, for example, for into K three into triangle is nothing else than this, than the three coloring. So that. Uh, then we have we may speak about C5 coloring, about Peterson graph coloring, and and, uh, and if, if we, the, uh, we know that H color the coloring problem is hard, and here is a Taylor theorem. It's old theorem which we prove with Pavel uh, that uh, that H coloring is hard if and only if the, the this uh, target graph, which in this setting is is called template, is a non bipartite it's not, uh, it was not uh, easy theorem, it's still not easy theorem, I believe, and uh, but there are other proofs of the, which uh, simplify it, uh, and more, more generally they put it in the different context, you know, I mean, they, and uh, there is a proof of Bulato, which is, uh, for you, oh, just go back, uh, which is uh, somehow algebraically related, and, and there is, uh, there is, uh, Proved by Mark, I mean, which is uh, building uh, from different contexts and uh, say, uh, uh, and it's a gadget proof, I mean, it's a very special gadget proof. And it's a Bartokozik proof, which is, uh, which is uh, or, or universal algebraic proof, I mean, in much stronger sense than Bulatov. And it's a Kunsegedi proof, which is uh, relating it to the, to the to the juntas and to the uh, so-called juntas and to the to the dynamical systems, you know, and uh, long codes and uh, it's very nice proof and it's a very recent <laughs> proof. So all these pr all these proofs are are hard. I mean, this is uh, and this is not so surprising because I mean the 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 the, the, uh, the situation with with this H coloring is uh, is not clear. I mean, there is a beautiful conjecture which is actually motivated by the, by that uh, theorem, uh, uh, or whether it was one of the motivations uh, uh, of, uh, for that uh, uh, for this conjecture uh, uh, is a so-called dichotomy conjecture of Federbade, which basically says that this uh, this uh, h coloring problem being generalized to the to the relation structure is always either polynomial or NP-complete. So it's hard. Yeah. It's never something in between. We know, I mean, there is a result on theoretical compute size, uh, so-called the Ladner theorem, classical Ladner theorem. We say saying that uh, that if these two classes are distinct, it's still possible that P is equal to NP. But uh, if these classes are distinct, then there is uh, infinitely many spectrum of uh, intermediate complexity classes which are uh, in, which are polynomial equivalent. No, non-equivalent, polynomial non-equivalent. So for oriented graphs even, this is an open problem which is sort of strange because uh, tempting because this is a theorem for undirected graphs and if you just do it for oriented graphs, you get a full complexity of, that's uh, by now known, that you get a full, full complexity of the, of the dichotomy, dichotomy conjecture. <coughs> How to approach it? One of the way how to approach it through the critical graphs. I mean, this is usual, usual way how we work in. If we want to pr 
to solve a four color conjecture, we are looking for the for the for the four for five critical graphs. We are looking for graphs which are potential candidate for disproving disproving uh, uh, four color conjecture. So we are looking for H critical graph. It's a graph which doesn't go into H, but every subgraph goes into it. So what are these, uh, what are these uh, critical graphs? And one way is to say that you, uh, you, you try to isolate the cases, for example, when there are only finitely many of these critical graphs, which, which uh, in, the, in the coloring problems, for example, in for, for color theorem, this is nonsense, right? There are infinitely many, easy to see that there are infinitely many uh, critical, critical graphs, uh, but, uh, but this is slightly misleading, and this is misleading, uh, misleading case of undirected graphs because for oriented graphs there are there are many of such uh, instances where you can many many instances of edge coloring where there are only finitely many of these forbidden uh, or uh, these uh, critical graphs. And for example, I mean uh, just a simple example as a warm up example: if H is transitive tournament with three points. Then there is only one critical graph in the uh, H critical graph, namely pass with oriented pass with four vertices, and uh, and you have you have this whole set generally and uh, in full generality for any k and uh, for any length of the pass, and that's a celebrated. It's usually uh, called Galileo theorem, but uh, they were actually was preceded by Hasse and Wittaver. I recently, I mean, that's uh, my favorite result. I was searching to it, and uh, and I was uh, actually giving the lecture uh, in presence of Matthias Evich, and he informed me actually that he as well. And so I mean, I should put here Matthias Evich, I mean, so as well. So he as well discovered uh, this uh, this this theorem independently, or gave the uh, logical some. He had some automatic uh, theorem proving logical uh, technique and. Uh, he, he applied, uh, he illustrated it on this story. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so there may be infinitely many. So it's a sort of like a jungle, right? Sometimes infinitely many, sometimes finite, you know. I mean, the, uh, so it's not clear what this means. And, uh, and uh, I will skip this. And actually, you can characterize it. Yeah. And this is uh, characterized, uh, this is leading to the notion of of a homomorphism duality. Homomorphism duality is that uh, that uh, you consider this uh, uh, this problem of uh, in this case the decoloring. So D is a fixed graph, and you consider all the problem that the given given graph that it has a homomorphism into D, and you want to uh, uh, you want to describe it by forbidding some finite family finite family of of graphs. I mean, and. Uh, and uh, sometimes this is possible. I mean, and it was full characterized by, by, by. It was full characterized by, uh, by Komarek uh, in the restricted for Boriente graphs. Was my student, and then, then by, uh, by, by me jointly with uh, Claude Tardif, and, uh, and the, the characterization is very simple. I mean that uh, what you are forbidding is a set of trees. I mean the, then, uh, then. Uh, approaching it from the right hand side, dual, it's, it's called the duality because somehow it's a dual, it's a, um, sorry. Up. You have to. So, so because I mean this coloring problem is uh, describing dual value by forbidding, uh, instead of speaking about homomorphism into D, you speak about homomorphism from something, uh, something else. So, uh, so the uh, uh, so the uh, uh, Laro Slot and, and Tardif characterize those uh, target which uh, for which the D three exists. I mean, which is not clear from the definition, and this is so called dismantable. They have uh, they can prove that uh, the corresponding decision problem is NP class. It's uh, characterized by logic. I mean, the the only uh, the only. CSP problems, only homomorphism problems, which can be described by finite dualities, are those which are which are definable, uh, which are definable in the first order logic, and they can be defined. It can be as well uh, defined in terms of the homomorphism, both. And, uh, and that I will skip.
I mean this. Uh, I would. I don't have my. So instead of going back to the uh, to the to the main line of the of the of the talk, I mean, can we have something like it for this restricted uh, can, for these special classes for these sparse classes? In a way, these are recurring problems. So they were for the. Uh, for we, but uh, this edge coloring problem was for dense classes and this, uh, this characterization of dualities was essentially using the fact that it was for, for, the, for, the, for the whole class, uh, for, the, for the class of all graphs. Can we do it for, uh, for, the, for uh, if we restrict it to the, uh, to, the, to the given class C? By which I, I would mean the following, that, uh, that uh, simply uh, that's this uh, cons this uh, homomorphism problem with Stager D, when restricted to the class C, should be the same as a uh, class of uh, class of all graphs or all objects which uh, in C, uh, which don't contain any 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 finite configuration of the points, and uh, so the duality is something like it splitting splitting the whole whole universum, whole uh, class of graphs into, into two parts, into what is under and what is above, above, uh, above F. And uh, restricted duality is the same thing, only you, you play it, you restrict it to the C. So, so there are more possibilities, of course. I mean, and, uh, and we say as an extreme case, we say that uh, class C has all restricted dualities. If you can forbid any finite family of the graphs and it get the, get the duality, so <coughs> and uh, it was proved earlier. So I mean, I will return the definition, but it was proved uh, it's a uh, it's not a uh, definition which is out of blue or which wasn't studied. For example, if you have a bounded degree graphs, they have all restricted dualities in the sense, and one of the motivating questions of our study was a question or a problem with the planar graphs have all restricted dualities and we proved that. Damn it. So therefore, so again what it means? So it means that I am, uh, you say that, uh, that uh, I have a class C, my favorite class of graphs, for example class of bounded degree graphs, class of graphs which which have maximal degree is bounded by three. And uh, and I fix finite family F1 up to Ft in C. And the theorem claims that there exists, so this is denoted by, by F. Right? And then for this F there exists some H depending on F which have the property that for any G from the C, just from the restricted to the class C, holds that uh, there exists I such that Fi F I goes into, or da, uh, goes into G, if and only if G goes to H. Yes, uh, should be the exit doesn't go. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And that's a theorem. I mean, for example, here is a, a nice example which uh, which follows. Uh, this is, I mean, a refinement of the general result, which is due to Rezana Serasa. So, if you forbid a triangle in the in the planar graph, you would like to you would like to get a graph which somehow doesn't have a triangle and so that every planar graph goes into it. So there is a, here is none. Is a, so if you, so, and the theorem is that uh, G, that the triangle doesn't go to planar graph, the planar graph doesn't have a triangle, if and only if uh, this, this graph, this planar graph is, uh, has a homomorphism into what's a, what's a Klebsch graph, I mean, it's a, it has 18 vertices. It's a color class of the Ramsey uh, R333. So, so, uh, <coughs> so it's a kind of restricted duality 
for the planar graph. This doesn't have a triangle, but you, that's uh, sort of easy. But uh, uh, but you have to prove that uh, that uh, and uh, that's actually related to some Seymour Seymour uh, theorem or Seymour conjecture uh, proved by Jim Gillen. Yeah. <coughs> So which graphs, uh, classes have uh, all restricted dualities? We have the finite dualities are exactly those, we, we characterize them, they are exactly those which are first order, uh, first order definable, and can one do it for a restricted dualities? And one can, actually. And, uh, and that uses uh, basically all the, all the results, the characterization is using, using all the results which were, which were uh, stated before in the first uh, class of the, the so the main uh, main result is uh, is uh, that uh, that uh, that all uh, that uh, that classes classes which uh, which have so called bounded expansion which are classes uh, in a, uh, which are uh, special class or the most uh, important subset of this Novartian classes they have all restricted dualities and they can be characterized by by this. Uh, and uh, one of the properties how they can be characterized is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is somehow in the in the special metric in the defined for the graphs. But uh, perhaps I will I will not uh, not not say it because I I, I am running a little bit out of time. So. But I want to say this. So this is uh, so. As one of the last remark, I will say this: uh, this, uh, this uh, class is uh, this Novartian can be defined by the counting, and uh, and that's sort of funny theorem that uh, if you take a, if you take a graph uh, uh, f and g, then o by home and g, this is the uh, number of homomorphism from the graph f to the graph g, and take this logarithmic density of the of the number 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 of homomorphisms, so this is basically the the exponent. So uh, expressing the number of homomorphisms as a power power of the power of the number of vertices. And if we if we consider this number and we take the limit of it, uh, in the suprema and in this resolution in this uh, larger uh, larger and larger uh, radius, then quite surprisingly we get integer. It goes. To, it's, it it uh, attains to integral value, and the integral value is uh, m minus infinity zero one up to independence number of f. The small graph f is fixed, but the g g is a uh, g is a uh, 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 graph graph in the in the class in some class, and for any class of the graphs, I mean this this goes to to one of one of these one of these values. And this characterizes uh, Novartian classes because this logarithmic density uh, is, uh, is, is, uh, it doesn't attain this, uh, or doesn't approach as this, uh, this value number of vertices of f if and only if this, uh, this, uh, this class is uh, Novartian. And, uh, and that was uh, motivated uh, basically by, uh, by the convergence study of uh, of this uh, graph or structural limits of graphs by uh, Lovas and Lovas Egedi and Shosh and uh, and others and this is uh, uh, this is the last part of uh, what I want to say and I want to say this I mean do you really give me two three minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes or no yes <laughs> thank you <laughs> so the uh, <coughs> So wake up if, if you <laughs> so if you uh, consider consider some relational language I mean so I consider all the all the first or the formulas uh, in the in that language if I, if we consider a subset of you speak about the fragment yeah and we say that uh, some family of graphs or uh, some sequence of graphs is x convergent. So x is fixed. <coughs> if for any formula, that's a formula, uh, in x, the sequence of these bracketing numbers, so these are numbers, converges. And what, is, what are these brackets? What these number mean? It means these are certain probabilities, in fact. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a size or number 
of p tuples, which have the property that they, if the GN satisfy the phi when we interpret the free, free variables and as the vertices of the graph. Yeah. So for example, if the if the if the phi is a formula uh, for formula phi x1 x2 is a formula there exists x such that x1 is uh, joined to x and uh, x is joined to x2 means and yeah. so what it means it means that x1 when we enter g is a model for phi with vertices v1 and v2 it's the same thing as that the distance of that that there exists the pass pass of length length two joining v1 and two v2 yeah it means just uh, that it is v1 and v2 but v1 up to v3 can be extended uh, to to in g to something what satisfies what satisfies v yeah and uh, and uh, this first order magic theory from the Boolean algebra, and uh, it's called a Lindenbaum Streis, a Lindenbaum uh, Tarski Boolean algebra. It is uh, if X is Boolean sub algebra, we can associate it with it a stone space, so which are it's a classical object which are ultra filters or homomorphism from X to zero one. And the topology is one, there is a stone duality there, and there is a term in the full generality. In the, if X is a supergebra of a first order uh, logic or for, uh, over the language L, then every, for every X convergent sequence, there exists a measure on this, on this uh, stone space, such that, such that for every formula, we have, uh, we have this, the, the limit, these limiting numbers are approaching exactly to the, to, the, to the integral with respect to the measure of the indicator function of this canonical sets associated to the, to the, to the phi. And, uh, and the special fragments uh, of it, for example, a quantifier free or uh, no sentences, no free variables, p-free variables, local formula, fine. And they actually lead to, 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 to well-known, uh, uh, to the all uh, lim structure limits which were considered. So for example, if we take uh, uh, sentences, no free variables, I mean, then this is equivalent to elementary convergence, what was studied in the model theory and the logic. So GN is convergent and for every formula, GN satisfies the GN for every formula, uh, all the GNs from certain point on are satisfying the formula. Uh, the, the quantifier free convergence, when they have no quantifiers, then this is related to homomorphisms. And it's equivalent, uh, it's not completely trivial, but it's equivalent to L convergence or left convergence or low mass convergence where the GN sequence is convergent if and only if, if and only if this homomorphism, the, the probability that a random mapping is a homomorphism or convergent for, for, for every F. And that's as well related to this, to, this, uh, to this counting result which I was saying before. <coughs> yeah. uh, there, is a, there is a graph, a third uh, example of it is a graph which have a bounded degree. Then there is a Benjamin Schramm convergence, which, which can be easily seen that it is equivalent to the, of the local convergence. This, uh, this uh, BS con Benjamin Schramm convergence is a convergence which is counting, which is counting how many, how many neighborhoods of the graph I mean, are isomorphic to a given, a given, given graph. So how many roots I mean, center of the neighborhoods can, uh, can you find in the graph so that uh, around it you have uh, uh, you have a graph isomorphic to a given graph, and if these numbers uh, converge, uh, uh, converge for uh, for for every every graph, then then you get the BS convergence, and and this is related. You have a theorem that uh, if you have a bounded degree graphs, this is uh, 
first order convergent, it's a long wave. It is Benjamin Ishram convergent and it is elementary convergent. I mean, so this is, this, uh, 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 somehow it seems that uh, uh, admitting these uh, formulas, admitting this first order there, you get a mess. Actually, it's not true. You get a natural extension of the, of the things and you get a unified framework. And the reason for it is that you can apply this uh, abstract machinery of the of the strong duality and restore M and all these uh, theorems which were uh, developed in the in the in analysis or functional analysis. I mean, and uh, it uh, I think it provides a good framework. You know, one of the last slides. I mean, so this uh, sparse there is dichotomy uh, is uh, is actually very very challenging in this area. It's a favorite line of Latsilovas. I mean that. Uh, but there are limits for intermediate classes. So I mean, there are yeah, these big, big graphs, you know, and, and it's variants. And then there are these dense graphs in the full generalities. There is, there are there limits, explicit limits, for some intermediate, uh, intermediate, intermediate classes, which one could define. I mean, of course, uh, then uh, you can see, uh, go further. Then you have. Uh, uh, you, uh, then you have this general term that there exists measure, but you would like to put hands on the, the measure should be on the graph, and you would like to construct the graph, I mean, which you can do in, the, in, in, uh, in some cases, for example, in the dense case. And so, and, uh, so there are there limits for intermediate classes, and, and we recently solved it for the graphs of bounded three depths, I mean, so. And a sort of first step in the line of this and the light motif of this, uh, 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 of this, of this lecture. I mean, so we're solving it for bounded three depths. Uh, so it means uh, it may be infinitely branching. I mean, but it, the degrees are not bounded. And but I mean, you can develop and you can describe explicit, explicitly uh, the the limit object, and you can do it for color trees too. So we, one should view it as a first step for the general bounded expansion and for these sparse classes. And we have this low three degree composition, so we can do it. We can then hope that passing from the low from this bounded three depths, we can get even more general. But this is uh, this is. This is presently only project or what we would like to do. He wrote a book with Patrice. It's a, every lecture should contain some propaganda. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, some book. And, and thank you for your attention.